Hello, welcome to another video podcast on neuroanatomy. In this podcast, we'll be talking about an important region of our cerebral cortex, which is known as the visual cortex. We'll be talking about the primary and secondary visual areas primarily. Right. So uh, just to give you a brief overview first, uh, we'll start with uh, a little bit of a background about the description of the occipital lobe. Uh, we will discuss different important sulci and the gyri present inside the occipital lobe. And we'll try to mark out the boundary and the extent of the occipital lobe. Uh, then once we're done with that, we'll jump over to the primary visual area where the information is primarily, the visual information is primarily going to be received uh, from the visual pathway. We'll talk about the location of that visual area. We'll see what is the function of that visual area. Area, the primary visual area and then we'll try to contextualize that in the bigger context of the functioning of the visual pathways and try to understand how the information is perceived in the primary visual area. Once we're done with that, then we'll talk about this relatively higher order association area such as the secondary visual area, its location and its function. So uh, let's start with this little uh, image over here of a prosection. So let's, as a, uh, as a general rule, whenever you look at any prosection, the first step is really to orientate that prosection or the image of that prosection. So what you're looking over here is basically a midline sagittal section, which has been taken uh, through the cerebral hemispheres. Remember, a midline sagittal, a sagittal section basically means any section which has been taken in an anteroposterior plane, right? So this plane, uh, section has been taken through the midline uh, in a sagittal plane and so the right cerebral hemisphere has been removed and what you're looking over here is basically the inner aspect or the medial surface of the left cerebral hemisphere right so now uh, if you look over here at the back this is the cerebellum that's a cut section of the cerebellum so that kind of gives you a clue that you're looking at the back end of the brain so this area would be uh, the occipital lobe of the brain right in the front we can see the frontal lobe of the brain right over here we can also see the cerebellum uh, we can also see the brain stem popping down from over here the midbrain followed by this bumpy pons and continuing down as the medulla and we can see a c-shaped cut section of a c-shaped structure which is the corpus callosum so these are a few of the highlight uh, highlighting features of the medial surface of cerebral hemisphere right so now that we have orientated the prosection and we know that we are looking at the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere how about if we uh, try to de Marcate the boundaries of the occipital lobe at the back, right? Now we know that occipital lobe is going to be somewhere at the back over here. In order to exactly mark out the boundaries of the occipital lobe uh, and to separate it out from the other lobes of the brain, we need to first identify an important sulcus, which is known as the parieto occipital sulcus, right? Remember, sulcus is a depression, right? Gyri is gyri are the elevations on the cerebral cortex. So where is the parieto occipital sulcus situated? Well, I can can color code that over here for you and you can see the parieto occipital sulcus present really clearly on the medial surface of the cerebral cortex extending all the way up over here almost to the superior margin and then it kind of you know jumps over a little bit onto the lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere as well which you obviously can't see over here but sulcus is more prominent on the medial side and that is why we're trying to demarcate the extent of the occipital lobe on the medial side, right? So this is the parietal occipital sulcus and name kind of tells you that this separates a parietal lobe in the front from the occipital lobe at the back over here. Now, uh, let's just take this opportunity to talk about another important sulcus, which is known as the calcarine sulcus. And that sulcus is situated within the occipital lobe, right? So let's just mark out uh, the, the extent, the, the let's just, uh, try to identify the calcarine sulcus, right? So this is where the calcarine sulcus is situated. It's inside the occipital lobe, more or less in a horizontal plane, and see it extends from the posterior margin and then uh, travels on the occipital lobe and literally cuts the parieto occipital sulcus at this point. And so because of this calcarine sulcus, we can actually divide the occipital lobe into two gyri. Remember, gyri are the elevations, right? Uh, we've got a gyrus at the top, which is known as the lingual, uh, sorry, which is known as the cuneate gyrus, also known as the cuneus. And down below over here, this is our 
lingual gyrus, also known as the lingula. So the calcarine sulcus basically splits up the occipital lobe into a cuneus at the top and lingula down below. And we'll uh, see why we are actually referring to these gyri and the sulci in when we talk about uh, the visual pathway and the way the visual information is going to be represented on the on the occipital cortex in an inverted fashion right so now we know a little bit about the occipital lobe so the next question basically is that where is the primary visual area where is the visual cortex where is the primary visual area situated well the primary visual area uh, is basically a narrow strip of the cortex which is situated all along the length of the calcarine sulcus. It's a striate cortex and it is situated within the walls of the calcarine sulcus, which means within the superior wall and within the inferior wall of calcarine sulcus. The superior wall is basically formed by the cuneate gyrus and the inferior wall is contributed by from uh, contributed by the lingual gyrus or the lingula and this is a narrow strip of cortex along the length of calcarine sulcus which is known as the primary visual area this is also known as the broadman's area 17 by the way right so primary visual area basically means that all the visual information coming from the visual from the retina through the visual pathway is going to be primarily received over here in the primary visual area that is the first uh, receival end of the uh, visual information as far as the visual cortex is concerned and then the information is going to be disseminated to the higher order areas such as the secondary areas and the tertiary association areas where the where we will start to make sense out of that information and try to understand try to perceive as to what we are you know seeing uh, uh, through through our eyes but uh, this is basically a very basic level perception which is going to happen over here. The higher order association areas are then going to make much more sense out of that information. Okay, now uh, uh, in order to understand the functioning of the visual cortex much better, we need to actually contextualize that in the, in the bigger context of the functioning of the visual pathway. So I'll just give you a brief overview of the visual pathways, although we're going to have a separate uh, video podcast on the visual pathways. Uh, so there, uh, that, that topic is going to be dealt in real detail but for now let's just you know briefly describe the visual pathway to contextualize the functioning of the primary visual area much better right so now in order to understand that first you have to be able to identify an important subcortical structure which is known as the thalamus right thalamus is basically an egg-shaped uh, group of nuclei which is situated right over here uh, and i've color coded that as blue over here for you guys and you can see it is situated kind of on top of the brain stem right this is a midbrain part of the brain stem and we can see the thalamus and the hypothalamic regions over here now why are we talking about thalamus here well thalamus is the main relay station for every kind of sensory information uh, and uh, and visual information is no exception so every visual every every information including visual information every sensory information has to first relay inside the thalamus before it gets projected onto the onto the cerebral cortex and so the same thing is happening over here with the visual information as well just as a side note there's one exception though the sense of smell the olfactory sensation doesn't get relayed inside the thalamus apart from that every sensory information has to relay inside the thalamus now inside the thalamus there is a nucleus present which is known as the lateral geniculate body which i've just you know uh, drawn over here in, in the form of a little cartoonic illustration from the left, this this is basically the nucleus where the, where the visual information is going to be relayed, and from there, from here, the visual information is going to be then projected through the optic radiations to, in into the into the primary visual area. See, uh, the optic radiations can be either divide uh, can can be basically subdivided into superior optic radiations or into inferior optic radiations. The superior optic radiations, these nerve fibers, they pass through the parietal lobe and then go into the superior wall of the calcarine sulcus in the primary visual area in the in the cuneate part of the primary visual area and the inferior optic radiations they actually go down through the temporal lobe and then uh, take the visual information project it onto the lingular ling lingular part of the calcarine sulcus in the lower part of the calcarine sulcus in the primary visual area in the broadband's area 17. Now uh, 
then uh, now so so now let's just jump over to the visual pathway now i'm just gonna you know explain the visual pathway in a little bit more detail over here so that you can understand how the image on the retina gets projected onto the primary visual area so let's just uh, take the help of this little cartoonic illustration over here right see what i've drawn over here is basically an image of the uh, cartoonic uh, image of the retina over here for the right eye and a retina over here for the left eye right we can divide the retina into an outer half which is known as the temporal retina and the inner half which is known as the nasal retina right same situation same story here for the left retina as well we've got a nasal half which is towards the side of the nose right and an outer half which is known as the temporal half of the retina right what you can see over here is that see the visual uh, the visual pathway or the neurons which are responsible for taking that visual information in the visual pathway they are projecting from the temporal half of the retina uh, onto the lateral geniculate body. Remember, the lateral geniculate body is inside the thalamus. That's where the sensory information is being relayed, right? So the temporal retina, those visual fibers from the temporal retina, they are actually projecting onto the lateral geniculate body or the thalamus of the same side, which means they're actually going to the ipsilateral uh, lateral geniculate body and so this information from the temporal retina is going to be projected onto the visual cortex of the same site on the ipsilateral side however you can see that the nasal fibers they kind of cross over right temporal fibers they don't cross but nasal fibers cross over so the uh, the visual and visual pathways from the nasal retina of the left eye are being projected onto the lateral geniculate body of the right side of the opposite side which means the contralateral side so in other words what i'm trying to say is that the visual cortex the primary visual area on the right side is going to receive the visual uh, pathway, the visual fibers from the temporal retina of the same side and the nasal retina of the opposite side and vice versa in case of the left side right now have a look at this visual field which i'm drawn over here so this is basically the visual field or anything which the individual can see uh, in his field of vision right we can divide this visual field into right and left halves right and what you can see over here is that see the left visual field is being projected onto the temporal retina of the right eye and onto the nasal retina of the left eye right and vice versa in case of the right visual field so the visual field is kind of uh, represent it is kind of flipped over in a horizontal axis onto the retina right and so if the temporal fibers uh, of the of the ipsilateral retina they go onto the occipital cortex onto the visual area of the same side and that means that those fibers are actually bringing visual information from the left visual field and if the nasal fibers of the left eye they project onto the right occipital cortex or the primary visual area then they're actually bringing the visual information from the left visual field as well in other words what i'm trying to say is that the left visual field is then projecting onto the right visual cortex and the right visual field is getting projected onto the left primary visual area or the visual cortex and this is important to know from a localization of vision perspective because let's say if there's a stroke involving the right occipital cortex then the left visual field is going to be compromised and the right visual field is going to be compromised if there is a lesion in the left occipital cortex or the primary visual area. So that is how we apply this information clinically. Now, to make things a little bit more complicated, the flipping of the visual field is not just in a horizontal axis, it's in a vertical axis as well. So the upper visual field is going to, going to be projected onto the lower part of the retina. In other words, that upper visual image is going to be projected onto the lower part of the primary visual area which means inside the lingual lingular lingular gyrus or inside the lingula while the lower visual field is going to be projected into the upper retina which means it's going to be projected onto the cuneus or the cuneate gyrus so what i'm trying to say is that uh, the image if you're looking at me for example then i'm going to be projected my image is going to be projected onto your primary visual area in an upside down fashion my image is going to be flipped over in a vertical axis as well
right another important principle which you have to know in context of understanding the visual uh, pathway and uh, the function of the primary visual area is that the the retina the central part of the retina which has the highest visual acuity which is known as the macula lutea or the macula that is actually projected onto the posterior part of the calcarine sulcus right while the image which is in the which is projecting into the peripheral part of the retina that would be actually projected onto the anterior part of the calcarine sulcus and this is important to know because i uh, see uh, the 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 blood vessel which is supplying the artery which is supplying the occipital cortex primarily is the posterior cerebral artery and the artery which is supplying the the lateral surface the supralateral surface on the outer side is the middle cerebral artery but sometimes the middle cerebral artery could encroach a little bit onto the medial side as well from the back and so this region where the macula is being projected uh, the macular retina is being projected that kind of has a dual vascular supply not just from the pca the posterior cerebral artery on the medial side but from the mca on the outer side as well and so that is a, a very good protective mechanism which is offered by the nature that if there is a stroke involving the posterior cerebral artery and the image gets really compromise because of the damage to the primary visual area the individual might still have some vision intact central vision intact because the macula is kind of spared over here as this part of the cortex is receiving its vascular supply from the mca as well so mca kind of comes for the rescue of the pca function uh, so that's a protective thing uh, offered by the nature and that's something which is important to know right so now we know a little bit about the primary visual area let's just go over to the secondary visual area well the secondary visual area is basically broadband's area 18 and 19 the secondary visual area that surrounds the primary visual area so it's going to be a little strip of cortex over here above the calcarine sulcus and a little strip over here below the calcarine sulcus around the primary visual area primary visual area was area 17 this is area 18 and 19. This area receives afferent fibers from uh, the primary visual area and other cortical areas as well such as uh, in, including including the subcortical structure such as the thalamus. The function of the secondary visual area is then to relate the visual information which is received by the primary visual area, relate it to past visual experiences as well, and this eventually, you know, enabling the individual to recognize and appreciate as to what he or she is seeing. So this is now a higher order perception of that visual information which is happening inside the secondary visual area. From here, the visual information is then going to be given to the tertiary higher order association areas where the visual information is going to be amalgamated with let's say the sense of touch uh, and with auditory information with the taste sensation you know whatever sensory information is coming off from the uh, from the object which we are trying to perceive in our external environment and then that's a higher order perception where we, our brain tries to make sense as to what we are actually you know seeing in the outside world Right, so just to summarize, uh, what we've done so far in this video podcast is that we have talked about the, uh, the extent of the occipital lobe, then we talked about the functioning of the primary visual area, we elaborated a little bit on the visual pathways so as to contextualize the functioning of the primary visual area better, and then we saw that how the information is better is, is then perceived in a hierarchical fashion uh, in, in the secondary visual area and then into the higher order uh, tertiary association areas. See you next time with another interesting video podcast on another topic in your anatomy. Thank you very much.